The M22 is one of the stranger liquid coolers made by a relatively large liquid cooling manufacturer. NZXT dumped Ace Attack for this 120mm closed loop cooler instead of opting for a pump and radiator design that circumvents Ace Attack patents and permits sale in the US. The M22 is a complement to NZXT's Ace Attack products at the high end, which will still exist, but comes in at $100 and 120mm. That's a bit high for a 120mm liquid cooler, particularly considering that competition from EVGA CLC 120 comes in at $70 and is made by the familiar Ace Attack. But its performance may make up for the price differential. Today, we'll find out. Before that, this video is brought to you by iFixit's brand new Manta driver kit. The iFixit Manta kit is a universal repair toolkit that includes 112 steel bits, redesigned from the ground up with longer necks for 4mm bits, allowing more precision when working on components. The $60 iFixit Manta kit has everything from pentalobe drivers to Y drivers and standard bits. Learn more at the link in the description below. We already have a teardown video of the NZXT M22 that's in pieces in front of me. So if you haven't seen that and you're curious, you can check that video out. It went up already. But the short of it, basically there's a pump located inside of the radiator that takes up some of the potential dissipation room for additional aluminum fins, but it does bypass Ace Attack's patent registration where they basically say we're the only people who can put a pump in the CPU block. So it gets around that. In terms of design, overall it's not that different from any other closed loop liquid cooler. They only work so many ways. There's a copper cold plate with micro fins in it. It's got a gasket on top of the cold plate. So the gasket's over here and basically helps direct flow and uh, change, modulate the pressure as necessary for the liquid going through the micro fins. That mounts to what would be the CPU block, except the pump isn't in there. And then the rest of it just flows through the radiator as it would do in any other liquid cooler. Nothing else has really changed for the most part. So the concerns obviously would be you're sacrificing some of your aluminum fin area in the radiator. So the density of your fin stack is less and uh, potentially covering some of the airflow area with that pump located there. Now, fortunately, most of it is right behind a dead zone on the fan. It's behind the hub. So you're not pushing any air really through the hub anyway. Maybe some of it gets out and goes around uh, if there's enough gap between the fan and the radiator fins. But for the most part, it's not going to be too much of a problem, except this is bigger than just the hub. So the outside edges of the pump do obstruct some airflow and you do sacrifice some of the fin stack area. So we'll get to looking into that today. The M22 is $100. The X42, which is an Ace Attack NZXT cooler, 140 millimeter, is presently $115 on Amazon. So 15 bucks more for 140. And we'll see how the thermal performance is in a moment. The EVGA CLC 120 is presently $70. We never liked the EVGA CLC 120. In fact, our review of it was pretty critical. And that's because it made absolutely no sense to buy. The 240s or 280 uh, are so much better that it just doesn't make a good purchase, except the cooler is now dropped down to $70. So it's pretty competitive in that regard these days. But there are, are a lot of 120s out there that are pretty competitive in price, considering the M22 is hundred bucks. To NZXC's credit, the LEDs on this cooler are basically the best in their class. It's just, the infinity mirror like they have on all of the other NZXT liquid coolers, except it's a slightly smaller block on top, uh, but it's still got the cam integration for RGB LEDs. So they've got that right. Not many other people do that in the 120 class. The cooling uh, might not be there though. So let's go over that. First of all, uh, supplier overview. This is made by Apoltech. NZXT obviously specifies a lot of it. They created the PCB for the RGB LED control. That's NZXT's doing. But the cooler itself, the pump, is made by Apoltech. They source a radiator. Well, they probably make a radiator for this one. And the rest of it's all done by them. They make a couple of other coolers as well. They've previously made the Silverstone Tundra series coolers. For the most part, your suppliers in the industry primarily include Ace Attack, sometimes Cool It or Cool IT if you prefer. And that's really mostly it. Dynatron used to make a lot of stuff, doesn't make as much anymore. So those are your suppliers. For testing, as always, go to the link in the description below for the article that'll contain testing methodology and also some additional information if you want some more on this cooler. But let's start with the 40 dBA noise normalized charts. This is where we basically set all the coolers to output an equivalent of 40 decibels of noise at 20 inches of distance for the full system, which uses a passive power supply and a very quiet G4 
GPU fan. So we're mostly looking at the cooler noise at this point. And then that allows us to see the efficiency of the cooler at 40 decibels to more fairly compare all of them with one another with their own fans. So this is out of the box thermals, except at 40 decibels. Normalized at 40 dBA across the board, the NZXT Kraken M22 falls in dead last, attributable in part to reduced surface area for heat spreading. The M22 operated at 54 degrees Celsius over ambient when restricted to 40 dBA, markedly behind EVGA CLC120, a cooler that again we didn't like that much, and at 49 degrees over ambient for that one. The reason we didn't like the CLC120 from EVGA was mostly because alternative 240 products performed better, quieter, and were not that distant in price at time of launch. Looking to the Kraken X42, the difference in performance is tremendous. It's about 10 degrees cooler at 40 dBA than the M22, and costs about $15 more via retail channels like Amazon. That's money well spent. The EVGA CLC240 is available for $90 via Amazon these days, 10 bucks cheaper than the M22, with the Corsair H100i V2 at $105. Either one of these would be a significantly better choice in terms of cooling at the price. Even the CLC120 would be, though we'd still advise against it, but $70 does help. A quick note here, of course, there are places you can't just use a 240, even if it costs less. So in those instances, yes, you will still have to use a 120 or maybe a 140 if you can. The X42, if you can fit a 140, is much better than the M22 so far but there are still other alternatives in the 120 class. So let's go over a couple of additional numbers. Here's an over time chart that shows the EVGA CLC120 with the NZXT fan and the EVGA fan, allowing us to determine whether the thermal difference was a result of the fans or a result of the radiator and pump design. The NZXT fan is cooler overall across our power cycling torture test. That's why you see the ups and downs and also deals better with soaks. This leads us to believe that it's not the fan that's inferior, it's actually better, but the radiator and the pump design, which are restrictive in a few ways, one of which being that you're not getting as much surface area to spread the heat, and the other being that the impeller, as we saw in the teardown, is kind of weak. For this chart, the NZXT M22 in flat out thermals lands again toward the bottom at 53 degrees Celsius over ambient, around equivalence with a slowed down 1500 RPM EVGA CLC120, which operates significantly quieter, and the max speed M22 is 45.8 dBA. The X52, a cooler that we shunted in favor of the X62, is a few degrees warmer than the M22 when cut down to 800 RPM, landing at 55.6 degrees Celsius over ambient. It's way more expensive than the M22, but the H100i V2 isn't. It's $5 more and at a heavily slowed down and quieted 1050 RPM. The H150i V2 performs at around 44 degrees over ambient for this testing. Unless you absolutely need both the 120 form factor and the lighting effects, it's hard to find a place for the M22. Moving to noise at 100% fan speeds, the M22 operates at 45.8 dBA, not too distant from the X42 at 1700 RPM, which creates a 48.6 dBA total system noise at 20 inches. The EVGA CLC120 is capable of maintaining a lower noise level with equivalent performance or significantly higher noise levels at max fan speed. That part is up to the user, obviously. So the M22 is primarily good for one user, someone who wants a 120 millimeter form factor specifically and nothing else will suffice. And that same person must also want the RGB LED lighting effects that CAM provides through the top of the block. If you don't care about the RGB LED stuff, skip the cooler entirely, buy another 120, assuming you need a 120. The UVGA CLC120 is still not our favorite, but at the new $70 price, it's far more arguable. And it's not like some cheapo 120 cooler made by a no-name supplier. It's still made by Azatec. It's basically the same parts you'd get if you bought a 280 from EVGA. The difference is the radiator is smaller. So in terms of reliability, it'll be fine. Even though $70 makes it look a bit cheap, I mean, you of course could also go air at that price. You would definitely do pretty well if you just went with an air cooler. But there are definitely valid reasons to get a 120. So if you need a 120 and you don't care about the lights, skip the M22. That's what we're saying. If you uh, don't need a 120 and you do care about the lights, then get something better that's $90, like a 240 from EVGA, from Corsair. Uh, the LEDs are not nearly as impressive with those two, we don't think, as the NZXT options. So you get the NZXT X42. If you really want the LEDs, but you want a better cooler thermally, 
The X42 is perfectly fine and it's 15 bucks more on Amazon on average. So it's absolutely worth the money in our opinion. And then finally, if you don't need the LEDs at all and you can go with a larger cooler, there are way better options. The H100 IV2 is pretty good for the price especially. The EVGA CLC240 is pretty good. And uh, there are quite a few others, but we'll stick with those two for now as kind of the go-to for the current price in the market. They, they're competitive and they perform basically all the same because their only difference really is fan noise and fan speed. And you can check our reviews of those for more on those coolers. So that's it for this one. The M22, not really impressed with it. The pump design, although it's unique, it's creative, and they have to be creative if they're trying to circumvent patent issues where NZXC is a partner with Asia Tech. So that gets kind of messy. If they're starting to make things that don't use Asia Tech products, it might be in everyone's best interest to try and not cause problems by going with a design that doesn't have the pump on the block. And so they did. And we have to give them credit for that. It's just that the design doesn't seem particularly good. So. Maybe it could be improved. You could probably move the pump to the tank instead. That causes new problems like compatibility. Any case that can barely fit a 240 will certainly not fit a 240 with a pump in the tank. So there, there are a lot of challenges here with the patent that NZXT and anyone else has to work around if they don't want to use Azatec, but they are worried about backlash from Azatec in the instance where they're partnered with them, for instance, like NZXT still is. So we do give credit for that. It's just as a consumer, you don't buy something because they were unique. Uh, you buy something because it was actually good. And this isn't particularly good, except for in that very specific one use case where you want the LEDs and a 120 form factor. In which case, buy it, I guess. But an air cooler would probably be better or any other liquid cooler. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. As always, check out the Teardown if you haven't seen it already. It's on the channel. Subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Tell us that directly or store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one, one of our teardown mats, or the new GN Crystal. I'll see you all next time.